Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News, episode 294 on Now You Know. Now, before we get started, I have to admit that this is going to be a weird episode. You see, Zach here has COVID. Yeah, I'm not in the studio at the same time as Jesse. As you may notice, he can't hear me because he isn't really here. Are you, Jesse? Well, I'm here, uh, but Zach isn't. That is to say that we aren't here at the same time. So this week's show is a bit of an experiment. We wanted to bring you the news like we have been doing for the past 293 weeks, and we didn't want to let a little thing like COVID get in the way. So please forgive us. This week's show isn't up to our regular standards, but we're doing the best we can under the circumstances. And now on with the show. Help support us bring you independent news every week by heading over to patreon.com slash now you know. You can sign up for things like Patreon bonus stories, which we do every week, our investor club, and lots of other perks like t-shirts and mugs. Jesse, what, what is that you're holding? Oh, this is my new Wi-Fi microscope. And what are you doing with it? Well, I got it for other reasons, but uh, it's a Wi-Fi microscope, so I was playing around with it and I was looking at my face and it's really cool. I've learned a lot. And why are you doing this? Remember before I shaved with my Henson shaver how I used to get those ingrown hairs? Mm -hmm. Well, I was trying to understand how that works. Bottom line, using my Henson shaver is such a pleasure. Always gives me a close shave and I look forward to using it every time. So head on over to HensonShaving.com right now. Use the code now you know to get your Henson shaver and a free box of 100 blades. Hey, and stick around. At the end of the show, if you want to see some kind of gross microscopic pictures of my face, I'll show you what I mean. And we're also brought to you by BigBattery.com. No matter what you need to power, Big Battery can provide you with the latest battery tech at the best price per kilowatt hour guaranteed. Do they have a battery for my RV? Absolutely. What about my golf cart? Yep. Even boats? You bet. They provide some of the safest and most reliable lithium batteries available today, and they're made right here in the U.S. Pick up yours today at BigBattery.com and use code NOWYOUKNOW for 10% off. So Tesla released their Q1 2022 earnings call and shareholder deck last Wednesday. They were filled with interesting facts, tidbits, and surprises. We called through it all to bring you what we consider interesting and important. First off, Tesla broke some new financial records, including highest revenue, highest gross margins, highest operating margins, and bottom line profitability. So let's dive into those first. All right, so record vehicle deliveries, 305,407 total delivered, the eighth quarter in a row of growth. Two years straight of record quarterly vehicle deliveries, 69% year over year. Nice. This despite being a very difficult quarter with continued chip shortages and supply chain issues. Tesla had record automotive and total revenue fourth quarter in a row. Total revenue in Q1 was $18.8 billion, up 81% year over year. And Zach Kirkhorn, Tesla's CFO, gave guidance that Tesla still expects a growth rate of 50% or more in 2022. Elon even said a reasonable shot at a 60% increase. And if you think we're acting weird lately, YouTube has been acting weird. So please hit the like button if you appreciate the work we're doing and you want to share this with others. Thanks. Gap Automotive gross margin, we're at an all-time high of 32.9%, and for the first time exceeded 30%, even when excluding regulatory credits. This chart from hypercharts.co shows all margins, gross, operating, and profit margins. They're all on an amazing trend now, as they have been for the past year, and they have all hit all-time highs. Tesla's Gap earnings per share was $2.86 a share. That's up 633% year over year. And Tesla's debt was less than $100 million at the end of Q1. Now, can you help put this into perspective? Sure. How about this chart showing Tesla's debt since 2010? See, it went up to a high of about $12 billion, and now it's almost zero. But what about Tesla's debt compared to like other automakers? All right, check out these charts here showing first Tesla in blue. I added that last little data at the end there. Or this chart showing Tesla on the far right. Both of them are comparing the debt to other automakers. And the crazy thing is that Tesla's cash in the bank remains high at $17.5 Some bad news is that Tesla's solar deployed was down to 48 megawatts due to import delays on certain solar components. That's down 48% year over year. 
But energy storage, that's power walls, power packs, and mega packs, was up 90% year over year at 846 megawatt hours. Again, it does look like it's trending down, but this is because of supply constraints, not demand, according to Tesla. Supercharger stations were up 3,724. That's up 38% year over year. Market share of Tesla by region is increasing steadily. Wow. And I think that's basically all Model Y. And Tesla has a current automotive run rate of over 1 million vehicles per year. 3.6 billion gap operating income and a gap operating margin of 19.2%. And let's compare those margins to other automakers. You see Tesla's operating margin here in red. Now everyone seems to be asking, if I get a Model Y made in Texas, will it be a 4680 structural battery pack? And the answer is maybe. In the Q1 shareholder deck, we found this on page seven. Quote, later this year, we expect Gigafactory Texas will be able to produce Model Ys using both structural packs with 4680 cells, as well as non-structural packs with 2170 cells. Giga Berlin is starting with 2170 cells this year. Elon says both Berlin and Texas should be achieving high volume by the end of this year. This two month chart in the shareholder deck shows Tesla's gross US orders and the Super Bowl effect. A sharp spike in Tesla orders after the Super Bowl. Now you might be asking, why? Why? Since Tesla didn't even run any ads during the game. In fact, just to be clear, Tesla spends zero on advertising. Versus big automakers like Ford and GM that spent $4 billion on TV ads in the first nine months of 2021 alone. But I think the spike was due to the fact that many automakers did run ads for their new EVs, but few of them were available at the time, like the BMW iX, which is not available until May of this year or the Nissan Aria, which isn't available, or the Chevy Silverado, which won't be until 2024. Tesla expanded its Tesla insurance into three new states last week, Colorado, Oregon, and Virginia. And in these three new states, Tesla insurance is also the underwriter of the policies, making them a fully vertically integrated insurance provider. CFO Zach Kirkhorn said Texas is Tesla's longest standing real-time insurance market, and Tesla is the second largest insurer of Tesla's in Texas. And possibly by the end of Q2 or next quarter, Tesla insurance will be the largest insurer of Tesla's in Texas. Tesla is working to get 80% of U.S. Tesla owners to have access to Tesla insurance by the end of this year. Then they will focus on outside the U.S. Elon said, we are seeing that having real-time feedback for driving habits is actually resulting in Tesla owners driving the cars in a safer way. Tesla reported services and other margin at close to break even for the first time. That's minus 0.6%, saying that improvement was driven by strong used car sales as well as growth in merchandise, Tesla owned collision centers and related services. This is great news because instead of losing money on services, Tesla is now doing what they set out to do, not profit from service, but at least break even. We learned from Elon that Tesla aspires to produce dedicated robo-taxis without steering wheels or pedals that are, quote, highly optimized for autonomy in volume production in 2024. It'll be optimized to deliver the lowest cost per mile, making an autonomous robo-taxi ride cheaper than a bus or train ride. Elon went on to say, I think that will really be a massive driver of Tesla's growth. And let's not forget Cybertruck. Elon again reiterated that we remain on track to reach volume production of the Cybertruck next year. And we've heard a lot of people say as we show off our new Rivian, is Tesla ever going to come out with the Cybertruck? And I think this is really good news. It's been a long wait, but I think next year is going to be really exciting. And Elon said this as he wrapped up his comments, which I think is important to remember. And we're really at the early stage of our journey. We only crossed 1 million units in the past 12 months recently, and we aspire to head to 20 million units per year. So we're basically 5% along the way towards our goal, very rapidly, year over year, and we remain confident of exceeding 50% annual growth for the foreseeable future. That's definitely something you want to hear from Elon. And on Optimus, Elon said, I was surprised that people did not realize the magnitude of the Optimus robot program. The importance of Optimus will become apparent in the coming years. Those who are insightful and listen carefully will understand that Optimus ultimately will be worth more than the car business, worth more than full self-driving. That's my firm belief. Tesla Time News is sponsored by Cybertruck Owners Club. There you'll find a crowdsource reservation tracker that you can update and find your place in line. Check out their website for Cybertruck news, discussions, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners. So over on our Now Let's Review YouTube channel, Ethan and Bobby reviewed the electric bike company's Model E e-bike. 
As Ethan mentioned during the review, every bike is designed for different uses and riders. If you're looking for a classic cruiser or beach cruiser style e-bike, you should definitely check out the electric bike company Model E. Now, I have never found an e-bike that you could customize as much as this. You can choose the colors of different components and spec out different parts to your heart's content, making this bike really yours. We wanted to make the metal fenders really stand out in red, and we even picked the tire color. So many cool features, from the integrated headlight on the front basket to the integrated taillight on the rear cargo rack. This bike really fits my style when I want a relaxed, upright ride so nice on my back. So go check out our Now Let's Review channel to find your next e-bike, e-scooter, e-skateboard, and more. Okay, Jesse, I know you're gonna have fun with this story. This is the Star Concept by Lincoln. It should be arriving in the year 2025. Some of the key features are Lincoln's new intelligence system, including help me see and park for me, along with storage for slippers. Yes, I said slippers. <laughs> Can I just talk about this frunk with the electrochromatic glass that changes from opaque to transparent? I mean, first of all, I don't know why I need to see in the trunk. Can I open the trunk? But also, I just don't know why I need glass unless I'm like putting potted plants in there and, and I need to make sure that they're getting sun. The Star Concept also features this coast-to-coast -coast digital panoramic display. That's, that's how I like to consume my content. What is that, a 59 by 9 screen? And Lincoln says they will have three more EV models by 2026. Uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't hold your breath. <sighs> well, okay. Can I hold it for this one? Wait, what, what? Wait, what's this? Hey, the room is getting smaller. No, it's not. He's getting bigger. Wait, what's happening? Is the car shrinking? Remember, this is the Audi Sky Sphere concept. Uh, that EV that could change between a grand touring and sport mode. Oh, yeah. Now, the third concept in the Audi series is the Urban Sphere concept. You know, remember when we went to the LA Auto Show in 2019? Yeah, I'm getting flashbacks to 2018 and 2019 concept cars, all cars that we were supposed to be seeing by 2020. Wait, so I don't get the swiveling seats that swivel outward and project a red carpet of light onto the ground next to the vehicle? And I mean, you know that none of this will make it into the final car, right? Hey, if you'd like to share this story, but you don't want to share the whole episode, head on over to our Now You Know Clips channel, where we cut these into bite-sized clips that you can share with your friends. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. Remember, we need your stories. So remember to send them in to us uh, two minutes or less. Shoot them in landscape with good audio, no music. Send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. And uh, let's see what we got this week. We got Brian and his family. They just took a road trip. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Brian Reby here coming to you live from Cocoa Beach, Florida. We are having a fantastic road trip. We left Minnesota in the Tesla Model Y all the way down to Florida and are spending some great days down here and then we're about to take off and drive back into the miserable cold. But I wanted to share with you kind of the story of the trip, which was destination charging, which made our lives so much easier. Before leaving, I took some time using a better route planner to map out the routes and decide how far we wanted to travel each day. Knowing the vicinity we'd be in each night, I hopped over to PlugShare to find hotels with destination charging. With more EVs on the road, I picked hotels with destination chargers that weren't too far from superchargers. So if a hotel's charger was offline or occupied, we'd have a bailout option that wouldn't be too far out of the way. If your routes are the same going and returning, it's a breeze to book the same stops on the way back. We were able to do that on one stop, and it was nice knowing the charging situation when we pulled in late at night. If you like knowing what's in store for you at destination chargers and superchargers, Now You Know's Supercharger Review Map is another great way to put your mind at ease. With hotels booked, we hit the road and were able to charge without issue at every one. That meant we saved five supercharging stops at an average cost of $11.66 per charge and an average stop time of 32 minutes when traveling with a child in diapers. The free hotel charging means we saved a total of $58.30 and two hours and 40 minutes of stop time all while getting rested up for the next day's adventures. So that's how we planned our trip and it's worked out great for us so far. Have a great day, and now you know. On the YouTube channel, Brian Reby Drives Electric. He's got videos of the whole trip with stats and info if folks are looking for more. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. On our Patreon bonus stories this week, we've got the first V2G neighborhood, Tesla hits a jet, and more. Head on over to patreon.com slash now you know and support us for just a buck a month. You'll get all these Patreon bonus stories and so much more. All 
right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our Patreon shout outs. Who do we have, Jess? RT. Jim and Michelle Vaughn. Eric Moreland. Walter Isaacson. Yes, this Walter Isaacson. I got his book right on set because we love him. Thank you, Walter. Philippe Van Der Gouche. Mr. Data. Dan McCreaney. Chris Nichter. Liz Lagmason. Serge Onyufreyev. Bob and Michael Murray. Dread One. Ray Cathrell. Ian Horton. Tim Neville. Emma Christina Eparisi. Andy. Bradley Kahn. Phil Shepard. Colette Moon. Dive Patty Bubblehead. Peter Leach. Eric DeVoe. And Nate Gershner. Thank you, Patrons. We could not do this show without you. All right, Jesse, we had a Patreon poll this week. What was it? The poll was asking, um, do you think that Optimus is going to be produced in the next few years? And I think the results are pretty interesting. So not too many people thought that it was coming out like next year, although some people did think that. And But pretty much nobody thought that it wasn't coming out. They thought that it was going to be somewhere between, you know, a year from now and maybe three to five years from now. So that's really interesting because our Patreons <laughs> are usually right. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. Hey, remember, share your stories and photos and videos with us. Send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. And here's what we got this week. Our buddy Fred sent us these photos he took of plastic flower pots he spotted at Rite Aid. What's the big deal, you might be asking? Well, these flower pots made in the U.S. by Bloom, or Dutch for flower, are made of 100% recycled ocean plastic. Every year, 8 million tons of plastic enters our oceans. When you buy recycled ocean plastic products, you're telling companies that you're willing to spend a little more to clean up the planet. And guess what? Companies follow the money. So thank you, Fred. Caroline in Golden, Colorado spotted this lime green Tesla Model 3. Mr. Truth said, hey, Zach and Jesse and the great team of Now You Know, finally, we picked up our refreshed Model X after 16 months. We couldn't be more proud that our little hawk has only known electric cars his whole life. The future is bright for the next generation. Jason sent us a picture of a wrapped Tesla that he spotted in Vancouver, Washington. Kareem sent us this story. He said, hey, guys, I thought I would contact you as there's a big issue with Uber in the UK. I deliver for Uber Eats and I was driving a diesel Volkswagen Golf. I've now bought a 2017 Hyundai Ionic Electric to save on cost and I love it. It has active cooling and charges at 62 kilowatts, unlike the Leaf. I also think CCS is the future. I updated my new car onto the Uber app to then find I couldn't go online. I contacted Uber support and they said that the Hyundai Ionic Electric is not allowed to operate in Cardiff. Then they sent me a link of eligible cars. I checked the list and my car is on that eligibility list. I told them this and they still won't let me go online. I even screenshotted the list and circled my car and they still wouldn't help me. I wanted to help Uber to become better for the environment. Instead, I lost my job. Luckily, I do this part time. Message to Uber drivers. Be careful of what car you buy because you could lose your job. Speak to other drivers and see what they drive. Do not trust the information that Uber puts out. They promote EV adoption on their website, but they fired me for owning one. Thanks, Kareem. And I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, I think someone watching, maybe you work for Uber, maybe you know someone at Uber. Let's reach out to them and let's get him his job back because he's uh, doing the right thing here. Jesus sent us these pictures of a Ford F-150 Lightning. It has California manufacturer plates, and those tires look like they're going for range. <laughs> and James in Las Vegas said, Hello, Zach and Jesse. I was in Las Vegas for a conference in April and walked over to the LVCC to see if I could ride in the LVC boring tunnel. But there wasn't a convention happening on any of those days, so the Teslas weren't driving. However, when I walked over to the convention center on Thursday afternoon, I did see something interesting. The boring drill. In my picture and short video, you can see the excavator digging up the parking lot to put the drill into place. Now you know. James. Thank you, James. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews. Let's see what's out there in the world. Hi, Jack and Jesse. This is Mark in Salmon Arm, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, we have brand new, eight new stalls. So I have superchargers here and three full chargers right here. And the amenities are the uh, home restaurant, Sutter's Pub over there. If you want to have a beer, there's Askew's grocery store. There's Dairy Queen down the street. And that's all the amenities. And I would rate this supercharger 9 out of 10 because it's uh, just off the Trans-Canada Highway and it's halfway between going to Vancouver from Calgary. Now you know. Hi Zach and Jesse, today I'm at Skydive San Joaquin Valley near Bakersfield, California. And guess what's near here? 
So yes, here we are, 20 chargers here at this nondescript location in the middle of nowhere, California, off of I-5 south of Bakersfield on Copus Road. And it's about more than half packed. I mean, for a place in the middle of nowhere, it's kind of full. But literally, there is nothing else here. Nothing except the charger, the drop zone, and Interstate 5. And they're, of course, filled with lovely Teslas of all shapes and sizes. Well, I guess if your kids really wanted something to do, they could play in this uh, dirt hole here. It might keep them occupied. I don't know. Or you could commit trespassing and wander through this uh, cherry grove here next to I-5. It's just, it's wasps, wasps, who the f***ing wasps here? But the amenities here, I mean, it does have, you know, air conditioned uh, bathrooms and, and since my cyber truck is still on order, I don't have a code to get in the bathroom. They say it's nice. They say it's quite pleasant. I really have pin code envy. And that's it here from the drop zone, right next to a sh that amazing supercharger uh, station, right next to I-5 here in, in San Joaquin Valley near Bakersfield, California. So Zach and Jesse, now you know. Hello, Zach and Jesse, coming to you pre-recorded from White River, Ontario, Canada. Here we have the six stall V3 supercharger stations. Um, as for stuff around me, there's not a whole lot. There is some family restaurants, a convenience store, and there's an A&W back there somewhere. Don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, place to use the washroom. Other than that, there's not much else around here. We're, we're quite a bit up north, northern Ontario, Canada. Uh, this is an essential supercharger station as it allows us Canadians to travel from one coast to the other on the Trans-Canada Highway. Um, yeah, given it that it's important, I would give this supercharger station rating a 5 out of 10. Thanks, now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse, here we are at the Hampton Inn on Forest Bridge Road in Louisville, Kentucky. And they have 12, count them, 12 destination chargers. And as you can see from what I just scanned, there are a few ice cars blocking a couple of them, but still open enough open ones if you need one. So we're here in our new Model X and getting ready to leave for Cleveland. Have a great day. Uh, and before we get to the new superchargers, let's look at our beautiful superchargers. Ari sent us this picture of a supercharger being built in Iceland. And that does look like it could be a beautiful location. All right, what do we got for new superchargers in the world, Jesse? We got the 12 stall in Walterboro, South Carolina. We got the 8 stall in Norwich East, UK. We got the 4 stall in Durango, Mexico. We got the 12 stall in Tracy, California. And the 8 stall in Ashland, Virginia. Okay, so only five this week, but that's not bad. Not bad. All right, it's time for the Patreon comment of the week. And David says, butts in seats works. I took a friend out to lunch and it was his first time in a Tesla. We did a launch and showed autopilot and how cheap it was to charge. And he ordered one as soon as we got back. Yes, that is what butts and seats is all about. That's how it works. And it's just amazing how it does work, especially in a Tesla, because it hits that reptilian part of your brain. And I bet Jesse's going to say the same thing. Yeah, David, thank you so much. Butts and seats really does work. Uh, I've done it many a time. And uh, I think many people, I think it's the thing that really gets people to understand what it is. I think that before you can experience it, you just don't understand it. Um, so thank you so much for reiterating a very important point. Hey everyone, thanks for watching all the way to the end. This week was incredibly hard for Jesse and I. As you can tell, we are recording our parts at separate times because I don't want to get anyone sick. And uh, you made it to the end of the show. I really appreciate it. I wanted to, look, I made this discovery. I bought this uh, little Wi-Fi um, microscope like on Amazon, it was like 30 bucks. And it was mostly for like teaching things. Like I have, um, you know, I have, little cousins. I wanted to get them interested in science and, and technology and stuff like that. So I bought this little thing. And like you do when you have a microscope, you want to put just about anything under it that you can. And I was looking at my face under the microscope um, and I hadn't shaved in a while. And I was learning why it was so cool that I had my Henson razor. And I also learned something about just shaving in general that I hadn't really completely understood. So to be warned, this is a little gross um, because humans up close gross so i'm going to show you a couple pictures 
This is like after a week of me not shaving. And so what you're seeing there are ingrown hairs, but not the normal type of ingrown hairs. What's happened is I've shaved my face nice and clean. The hairs grew out of my face just fine. And then because I was like wearing masks or sleeping or it was on my neck and sometimes I, you know, look down and my and my neck, you know, pushes into each, itself, the hair actually stabs back into my skin. This has nothing to do with Henson because Henson already did the job and this is, you know, week after the job has already been done. But it explains why I still got skin irritation because I was thinking like I'm using this bright razor. Sometimes I feel skin irritation and this explains why it is. You can see how sharp and how thick my beard hair is where it comes out of my face and you feel it and it's sharp. What I wasn't able to find were hairs that didn't make it out of my face. And that's the cool thing about Henson. And I know I keep talking about it and I know you're thinking like, okay, but you're like sponsored by Henson, right? And like, yes, we are. But I do really feel strongly about this because my whole life uh, I was shaving with like a five blade razor and it was just chewing up my face. And I have all these acne scars because I got acne because I had so many ingrown hairs and skin irritation. Um, the thing that I really like about my Henson razor is that it's one blade, so it's one pass. Switching to Henson, has been, is just made wonders in terms of my face and acne. And so for, if you, I mean, no matter how old you are, but especially for young people where acne is really bad, um, I highly recommend getting a Henson razor. Um, I also highly recommend getting a, a Wi-Fi microscope because it's just so cool that you can actually uh, see it in action. And I can see like after I've shaved, um, kind of what it looks like. And I'll, I'll show you some pictures of that too. Anyway, it's just a little thing that like, caught my attention and was so interesting to me this week um, as I was sitting at home not doing anything because I was a close contact with him. So anyway, really appreciate you watching Tesla Time News. We'll see you all next week, hopefully together in the same studio again. How about a high five, Jesse, for pulling it off? Now you know.